So, I'd like to end this video on the auditory system by just saying a little bit about hearing loss, which is also known as deafness. Now, I'm going to talk about the forms of hearing loss which result because of problems with the function of the ear, rather than because of problems with the central auditory pathways. Okay, so the forms of hearing loss that result because of a problem with the function of the ear can be split into two different forms. Firstly, there is conductive hearing loss, and that's a problem with the conduction of the oscillation associated with the sound through to the actual cochlea to cause oscillation in the vestibular duct. And then secondly, there is sensory neural hearing loss. And sensory neural hearing loss is a problem with the actual transduction of the oscillation of the cochlear duct into electrical signals. Okay, so let's just say a little bit about examples of what can cause conductive hearing loss and sensory neural hearing loss. So let's start off with conductive hearing loss. So, uh, this is very, very simple. So what could cause problems with the conduction of the sound into the actual cochlea to cause an oscillation of the cochlear duct? Well, one thing is if you've just got wax accumulation in the external auditory canal. So the external auditory canal, we know uh, it um, has a layer of wax on the surface which is there to try and prevent infection. Um, and if that accumulates, bringing up this picture, what could happen is the entire external auditory canal could become full of that wax. Uh, and of course then the sound, the oscillation in pressure, would not be able to conduct through to the tympanic membrane. So wax accumulation is one of the things which could lead to conductive um, hearing loss. So wax uh, accumulation, I'll put, that's an example. Another important example to be aware of is otitis media. Now remember, otitis media means inflammation of the middle ear. If you get inflammation of the middle ear, then inflammatory exudate can accumulate inside the middle ear cavity, and this can prevent uh, the ossicles actually conducting the oscillation to the cochlea. So there's another example of what could lead to problems with the oscillation being conducted to the cochlea to cause an oscillation of the cochlear duct. So otitis media is another example of uh, a conductive form of hearing loss. Uh, and the final other example that I want to mention is something called otosclerosis. Now otosclerosis is a little bit more interesting. In otosclerosis, you get hardening of the um, annular ligament which connects the stapes to the oval window. So this is something that I didn't mention earlier on, but in order to keep the stapes positioned in the oval window, there is a ligament that runs all the way around. So I'll try and draw a little bit of this. So we'll look from above. So here, this is supposed to represent the foot plate of the stapes, and I'll just repair the picture by putting the head of the stapes there as well. And then of course you'll have the oval window here. So I'll colour in the oval window in, in pink here. Now there is a connection that runs all the way around. Annular refers to a um, an annulus, which is a ring. Okay, so there is a ligament that runs all the way around between the edge of the oval window and the edge of the foot plate of the stapes. And this is known as the annular ligament. Okay, and this keeps the stapes positioned nicely uh, within the oval window and makes sure that it doesn't, you know, fall out. Okay, so it holds the stapes attached to the oval window in this way and it runs all the way around at the foot plate of the stapes and the outside of the oval window. So if I draw this from another aspect, if this is the foot plate of the stapes here, then you'd have the annular ligament running all the way around. Okay, now in otosclerosis, what actually happens is this annular ligament becomes hard, okay, and this 
actually prevents the stapes moving in and out of the oval window because this is too hard and isn't therefore flexible anymore. Okay, and that's what happens in otosclerosis and that will also lead to a conductive hearing loss because now oscillations in the uh, tympanic membrane will no longer be conducted into oscillations within the cochlea because the stapes is no longer oscillating in and out of the oval window in the way that it should because of this hardened annular ligament. Okay, so those are the three major examples then of conducting hearing loss. Now let's talk about sensorineural hearing loss. So this is going to occur because of damage generally to the hair cells, uh, to the inner and outer hair cells. So what different forms are there here? Well, one of the things is just age-related high-frequency hearing loss. This happens to most people as they get older. So I'll put this as the first one to mention, so high frequency hearing loss, and this is going to be age related. So as we get older, what generally happens is the hair cells that are towards the basal portion of the cochlear duct, they tend to degenerate, you tend to lose them. Okay, so gradually as we get older, we lose the hair cells that are in the basal portion of the cochlear duct. Now remember, the hair cells in the basal portion of the cochlear duct, they are going to transduce information about high frequency sounds, because the basilar membrane in the basilar, basal portion sorry, of the cochlear duct is very tight and will only be oscillating in response to very high frequency sounds. So if we're losing hair cells in that basal portion of the cochlear duct, then that means we're no longer going to be able to hear high frequency sounds, i.e. high pitch sounds. So that's why generally as people get older, they lose the ability to hear high frequency sounds. Okay, so that's a form of sensorineural hearing loss because it involves the loss of the uh, apparatus for transducing the oscillation of the cochlear duct into an electrical signal. Another really important one to be aware of is ototoxicity. Now this refers to the loss of hair cells because you've taken some sort of drug that has killed them. And there are certain drugs that are often, uh, well not often, but can be prescribed which uh, can lead to ototoxicity. So the ones that are really worth being aware of are the aminoglycoside antibiotics. So the aminoglycoside antibiotics, these are protein synthesis inhibitors. Their mechanism of action is still a little bit controversial, but what we do know is that they bind to the ribosomes inside bacterial cells and prevent them actually uh, translating mRNA into proteins successfully. They block protein synthesis. So examples of aminoglycoside antibiotics are gentamicin is a famous example. Another famous example is streptomycin. And finally, uh, neomycin is another famous example. So these are all aminoglycoside antibiotics. They all work by blocking protein synthesis within a bacterial cells by binding to ribosomes. It's not fundamentally understood uh, quite what they do to the ribosomes. It's still controversial. Um, but they block successful protein synthesis within bacterial cells and therefore have a good antibiotic effect. They prevent the bacterial cell from being able to divide because in order to divide it needs to make a huge number of new proteins. It needs to have enough proteins for two cells rather than just one. So they're very good antibiotics. However, the problem is that they do have a tendency to kill hair cells uh, within the organ of corti in your cochlea uh, and this can lead to a sensorineural hearing loss. Other drugs to be aware of is the anti-malarial drug quinine. So quinine is a drug that's used in uh, malaria, um, and again, it can have an ototoxic effect. It can lead to the death of hair cells and therefore a sensorineural hearing loss. The final thing that I want to tell you about which can lead to a sensorineural hearing loss is infections of the hair cells. So if you get certain viral infections, they can uh, specifically infect the hair cells and lead to them dying and that will also lead to uh, you no longer being able to transduce oscillations of the cochlear duct into electrical signals. So that's known as infective sensorineural hearing loss. Okay, so there we are. Three examples of conductive hearing loss and three examples of sensorineural hearing loss. 
we will end the video on the auditory system there. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned a lot.